Well, they say the perfect is the enemy of the good, and that is exactly the case in the project sitting behind me right now. I've been putting this one off for almost four months, and a lot of you have been asking for it in the comments, so this weekend I am determined to finish the DIY electric bike made from laptop batteries. How awesome is that? Real quick, before we move on, go back and watch the Don't Throw That Microwave Away video. I'll link it right here. That's the introduction to this project. Now that you know how this all started, I'll show you why I've been so hesitant to continue. A week after filming the Don't Throw That Microwave Away video, I actually built this spot welder for my batteries. But unfortunately, it was actually too powerful to spot weld these batteries together. Good amount of pressure. It's really on there, but it, it blew a hole through it. So I got really discouraged. I knew I had to go get new wire and rewrap it and remake it, and I just quit. So the batteries have been sitting for three and a half months now. All of my parts finally came in, all the connectors. Uh, I went through and made sure that they were all still holding a good charge and all but three were. So we're in good shape to put this together today. I've decided I'm not gonna waste time fixing this spot welder. I'm just gonna solder them together and get this thing done. You're probably asking, isn't starting with an electric bike cheating? How is that a DIY electric bike? Well, actually this has been more trouble than it's worth. And if I were to do it all over again, I would fork out the 250 bucks for the electric hub assembly on eBay. I'll link to it in the description and convert a nice road bike instead of trying to deal with this crappy Walmart trails bike. The expensive part of any electric bike is the battery. If I wanted to replace this electric bike battery with a lithium ion similar to this many cells with this kind of range, it would be almost $500. And I paid just under, just over 100 for all of these. So let's talk about these batteries for a second. This is an 18650 lithium ion cell. And although it looks like a double A, it actually is much, much larger. You can buy these new and you can buy them on eBay, but the problem is the ones on eBay are junk. Even though they'll say that they have a 5,000 milliamp hour life, you'll actually get less than 1,000. So you want to get the name brands like Panasonic or Sanyo. Problem is, those cost nine to $12 a piece. So the workaround is to buy new old stock laptop batteries off of eBay for anywhere between 10 and $20 a piece. They'll have six to 12 cells inside, and you can often get that price from nine to $12 per cell down to a dollar or two. That's what I did here, and I ended up paying just over $100 for 13 laptop batteries with six cells in each. One of the ways you can tell if you got a quality 18650 is actually by weighing it. A brand name battery should weigh 43 grams. So you can see here, these blue ones are right on target, but these cheap knockoffs, on the other hand, are a gram short. That's actually not too bad, so that pack wasn't too bad. Two grams short, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but you can tell that these came out of a Chinese aftermarket battery and not a true genuine HP or Dell or Lenovo or any brand name. Let's talk about some of the essentials if you want to make your own lithium-ion 18650 pack. The first is the batteries themselves. We've gone over that. The second is going to be a balance charger made for lithium-ion batteries. I use the IMAX B6. Uh, I got this off eBay for $19, and what this was capable of doing is balance charging the pack. So when we go to solder everything together, we're going to put everything in groups of 12, and this charger will actually charge each of those cells individually and keep them all balanced. There's actually an issue with overcharging lithium ion, and if you go over 4.2 volts, you can actually cause a fire or destroy the battery. And if you keep overcharging, you will actually decrease the lifespan of the battery and not get as much use out of it. I also waited three weeks for these to come in from China. They are just these little plastic connectors to attach all of the 18650s together so you can put them into one nice solid pack. After removing all of your batteries, you actually want to discharge each one individually with the IMAX and record their capacity. So this one, for example, is 1,742 milliamps, 1,896, 1,892. And the reason for this is you want to group like capacities together. And so for example, in one cell, we might put 12 batteries, but with these cheaper ones, maybe they don't have quite as much capacity. So we'll add a cell or two so that each of the six groups that we have are all well balanced for charging and discharge. There's an easy way and a hard way to do this. And I chose the hard way. The easy way is to go on eBay and order a bunch of these $2.18650 chargers, charge up all your batteries, and then use the IMAX B6 to discharge every battery and then throw them back in the chargers and charge them back up. I did it the slow way where I did every individual battery. I would charge it with the IMAX B6, 
discharge it with the IMAX V6, recharge it with the IMAX V6, because I was waiting three and a half or four weeks for these to come in from China. Since my electric bike has a 24 volt motor, that is the voltage I'm going to make my battery pack. So I'll wire each group of 12 in parallel and then take each block of six and wire those in series. And I'm finally, after four months of waiting, gonna get started on that now. There you go. All right, my battery is put together. Now I just need to connect all of the cells together. And I'm going to use some solid core wire and I'm going to solder all of these batteries together instead of trying to keep tweaking my spot welder. So I've arranged my battery pack in a way that these are all the positives of these 12 cells and then these 12 are flipped over. So this is the negative side. So it goes parallel and as soon as I connect these, these are now in series and then I run these in parallel. This design of wiring these together this way, uh, credit goes to Renault is super genius. Um, I've watched all of his videos and that's where I've learned everything I've learned about electric bike batteries. So go check his channel out. I'll leave a note in the description. Here it is all finished up. Both sides. We are hoping for 24 volts or more. Ready? 24.4, perfect. So I'm gonna build a quick and dirty little box for it to put on the back of the bike and we'll test it out. And if it works, we'll make something more permanent. I'm gonna flick it on and see what we get. Here we go. All right. Full power. Woo! All right, let's see if it scoots forward a little bit. Ready? Oh boy, here we go. Let's do a test. Okay, all zip tied down. This is the very first test. I have not even tried it yet. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Test on the e-bike. Recording there. Recording here. Here we go. Woo! It worked. Voltage stayed at 24.4, so that is a success. Let's go home and show Lauren. Check it out, even the pedal function works. So if you start pedaling, it kicks in and helps you. And then you can stop. I've been riding around for about 15 minutes. Let's see what we're looking like. 23.7 volts. I don't know if that's good or bad but I think that's pretty good. Last thing we need to figure out is the balance charging and then that's gonna wrap it up for today. Uh, I am not gonna put any more money or time into this actual bike. I'm gonna buy that hub on eBay and build another one of these batteries, but that's for another video. Let's work on the charging now. This is the connector I'll be using. I got this off of eBay. I will uh, link to this in the description, but this fits in the side of the IMAX B6 and it's set up where the blue is ground and then it has six positive leads that come out so it can balance each of the group of cells perfectly rather than overcharging one and undercharging another. So what I'm gonna do now is solder the blue to the ground of the pack and then put the each lead for the positive where they start on each pack. So it'll be on the top of this side and the bottom of this side and the top of this group and the bottom of this group and the top of this group and the bottom and so on. And then we plug in our new connector it's a good sign, nothing sparked. And hopefully nothing explodes. All right, so now all we do is wait. We're gonna let this charge for a while. We're uh, currently at 23.8 volts. 
Uh, once it's fully charged, I'll discharge it so that we can see what the total capacity is for the whole battery. And then we'll charge it up again and we'll be done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this build. I was gonna do like a huge makeover before and after and polish this bike up and make it look real nice. But this thing is such a piece of junk, it's, I'm not even gonna bother with it. So I have a 1971 Schwinn at home. I'm gonna use that. So this was more just about how to make the battery. I'm gonna ride around on this at work for a month or two and make sure the battery lasts before I invest in a second one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And when I do part two of this video where I convert the Schwinn and build another battery bank, I will make sure to address all of those questions so that we have a complete guide, A to B, laptop batteries into DIY electric bike. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week. Bye. All right, this has been charging for almost four hours now and it's still not fully charged. So there's no way this is gonna be completely charged and discharged before we post this video tonight. What we're hoping for is 20 amp hours. And if that's the case, then it will have about a 30 mile range and be twice the normal battery that came with it. So that's the goal. Look in the description for an update. Thanks guys. Bye.